So here we've seen smooth gray, and gray is a single dot in the center. Here we've seen that we've got a bright something in the center. It doesn't exceed 40%. It's about 38%, with something that goes from no saturation to pretty heavily saturated toward blue as a color. Now let's take a look at some more interesting images. Let's just open our scopes up so we can see this a little bit better. Here I've got a mountain. Notice I've got a lot of blue. I've got a little bit of brown, I've got a little bit of yellow, which is coming from the foliage, and more importantly, the reflection of the foliage. And I've got what's called a, a high contrast image. It sits at almost 0% and goes to 100%. I know there's something bright on the left side of the frame that isn't on the right side of the frame, but I don't know where. It's not at the top, not at the bottom. It happens to be this snow in the middle. I can see that there's something fairly dark, that's the foliage which extends across here, and that there's something which is increasingly bright as we move to the right-hand side, which is the reflection of the sky in the lake. These colors are medium saturated, nothing to write home about. A little bit of blue from the, this is actually the sky blue. We got another minor blue, probably the shade right in here, caused by that spike, and a little bit of, of golds and yellows from the foliage. Let's take a look at this night scene. Now we know this is a night scene because it's dark, but look at, it's not a single black line at the bottom. Look at how wide the spread of pixels is from near black at the bottom to near white at the top. Now the preponderance of color, this dark one right down here, this is the river, this is the Yarrow River in uh, Melbourne, Australia, and this arc right across here is the darker sky. The bulk of the pixels are dark, but I've got lots and lots of highlights from all the lights sparkling along either side of the river. And look at my color saturation. Oh my goodness, it's all over. Heavily yellow and golds and, and browns and a spike toward green, which is the, the lights on the building, and a lot of blue and magenta. There's a lot of different colors as this display shows the range that's available. I mean, the magenta here is the magenta from those lights. I can't say the magenta is on the left or the right side, but I can say that it's there. Or take a look at this daylight picture. Look at the two highlights. There's the falls on the left, the falls on the right, the dark foliage on the far right lower corner, the dark foliage in the left lower corner. We can clearly see the highlights, we can clearly see the shadows, but there's no way I could look at that and say, ah, oh, that must be two waterfalls in Hawaii. And there's no blue anywhere to be seen, or magenta, or, or cyan. It's all greens and golds. Thinking of golds, oh my goodness, look at this Grand Canyon sunrise, where I've got almost no blacks. And look at the sun right there, about 99%, about as pure white as you can get but I still have a full range of pixels, although it does fall off on the right-hand side. Notice how it's getting darker to the right and to the left. Look at this reds and golds and ambers and yellows. No blues or cyans or greens. Go back to a trade show. Now my white levels are over 100% caused by the ceiling lights. When you're in 8-bit mode, those are clamped at 100%. But I also have much more banding in my color. I have a, a rougher gradation. If you have the option, go with float. But now I've got to pay attention to my illegal white levels and illegal black levels. We'll show you how we can use the Lumetri settings to change that. Most of it is predominantly below 60%. I've got some speculars. I've got some bright, look at the red here, which is caused by just a little bit of red on the set, but it's enough to really spike the vector scope. Or here, a foggy day. The definition of foggy is there's no black and there's no white. Our black levels start around, oh, 15%. They end around 80. There's some saturation here, sort of covers the spectrum of colors, but nowhere near what we had with the, the sunrise or with the the Hawaiian waterfalls. Take a look at another foggy day. We've got the dark shadows of the truck, but if it wasn't for the truck, the darkest our image would be is around 20%. The lightest our images are around 80%, except for this specular right here, 
which we see on the balloon and another this bright specular down here is the spike we see here uh, we've got a lot of yellow golds reds a little bit of blue from the sky by the way sky is not blue sky is halfway between blue and cyan this spike here is the color of blue in the sky here's another proof of that there's our red balloon, our yellow balloon, our blue balloon, and a blue sky. And look at how dark it is, not over 60%. And look at how lifeless the image seems. It, it doesn't have any energy. It doesn't pop. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at color correction inside Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 176. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.